So we just got reports about the real reason why Aroldis Chapman didn't show up to that mandatory workout on Friday. We'll talk about that and him not showing up for the mandatory workout because we have quotes from Brian Cashman and Aaron Boone. We'll talk about the guys who are fighting for a roster spot, hoping to make the division series roster. We have the rotation, and we're going to discuss the wild card series because, wow, this was a fun weekend of baseball. All next on Locked on Yankees. You are Locked on Yankees, your daily New York Yankees podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Happy Monday, Yankees fans. Welcome to Locked On Yankees, which is part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Stacey Gotsoulias. I'd like to thank you for making Locked On Yankees your first listen every day. We're free and available on all platforms, including Apple, Odyssey, Spotify, and Stitcher. You can watch and subscribe to us on YouTube. Also hit the thumbs up button to like our videos and the bell so you're notified as soon as those videos go live. I just recorded a full show. And then the news came out that the reason why Aroldis Chapman skipped the mandatory workout on Friday was because he wasn't guaranteed a postseason roster spot. So he thought, well, why am I going? Because when I recorded the show earlier, we didn't really know the reason. We just knew he was down in Miami. He didn't show up for practice. We could have deduced that that would be the reason. But now we have the official reason because the Yankees were being a little secretive yes they came out with the news that he missed the workout but they were kind of not saying why he missed the workout but now we know now we know this is the thing Aroldis Chapman there are other guys on your team who don't know if they're making the roster for the division series but do you see them skipping practices no do the Yankees need this drama no they don't but you know what they're a better team without a role as Chapman. They don't need him. They don't need him. This might be the best thing that a role as Chapman has done during his entire Yankees tenure. He went about it the wrong way. And his teammates are not going to appreciate it. But I'm sure they didn't really appreciate the way he was half-assing his performances this season either. Aaron Hicks doesn't know if he's going to be on the roster. He was at Yankee Stadium practicing. Oswald Peraza doesn't know. I just, this, this man. <laughs> I, when the news came out yesterday, my first thought was, what is he doing? Like, what is the matter with this guy? And then my second thought was, well, they're probably better off without him. Because in a division series, you don't need a full rotation. And they don't. We'll talk about that in a second. So some guys who were starters can come in from the bullpen in case something goes wrong with the starters who are in the rotation right now. So you have guys like Tyone who can come out of the bullpen. Maybe even Herman. Holmes is iffy because he's coming back from the shoulder inflammation and he's definitely not available for Tuesday night, game one. But you have other guys in the bullpen who can do things. You have Luizaga. You have Trevino. It's okay. Efros. Couldn't think of Efros. Forgot about poor Efros. Sorry, Scott. I'm so fired up from this Aroldis Chapman thing. My brain is just... It's Monday. Aroldis Chapman is doing what he's doing. And we're all anxious about the division series against the Guardians. So, yeah, this is... Uh, uh, good Lord. Okay, so here are some of the quotes. So this was before the news came out about the real reason why he stayed behind. And this is how the Yankees were talking about it. Cashman said about 
or Aroldis Chapman. You've got to be all in at this time of year, and it's disappointing. We have people who are competing and dying to be on this roster, fighting to be on this roster. Even though those decisions haven't been made yet, he chose to be absent. Boone said him not being here was not okay. I just felt like it was best for him to stay away for now. They were just like, yeah, stay in Florida. <laughs> just stay there. Meanwhile, Oswaldo Cabrera was at a preseason Knicks game and shown on the big board at MSG. He's living his best life. So Ch uh, Cashman said that he fined Chapman an un undisclosed amount, after which Boone told Chapman that he should stay home for the entire ALDS. Cashman said he could not think of another example of a player skipping a mandatory workout during his entire tenure. Cashman has been here a long time. He's been here longer than some of you have been alive. <laughs> and no one else has done this. <laughs> yeah, so that was the actual reason. He was questioning whether or not he was going to be on the roster. And then he said, well, if I don't know if I'm going to be on the roster, why bother? What a good attitude to have. What a great attitude. And then Cashman said, this is what got me. I think the first tweet that I saw yesterday was Brendan Cuddy of NewJersey.com talking about how Cashman wasn't surprised that Chapman went AWOL, but that was basically all that was said. When you add everything up, it's not surprising. There's some questions about whether he's all in or not, or there have been some questions about whether he's all in or not for a little while. He's maintained verbally that he's in, but at times, actions don't match those words. So when he didn't show up on Friday, obviously at first, there were a lot of people upset and caught off guard. This isn't the only Chapman mess up this season. The tattoo that he got, that got infected, and it caused him to miss some games. Who gets a tattoo during the season? Even if you have a ton of tattoos, you still don't know if your skin is going to react wrong to a tattoo. Maybe you're going to a different person. Maybe they're using slightly different ink. Maybe it's a part of your body that's not used to having tattoos, and it has an adverse reaction. Oh... <sighs> So Cashman said, there's no legitimate reason why he wasn't here. He's employed. He was due to provide work. The postseason ro roster hadn't been set yet. He chose not to come. And he also said, Cashman, the focus is on the guys we have currently, and that's what we're going to focus on. <sighs> Yesterday started off so well for some of us. Depends on your sports alliances. But if you're a Yankees, Giants, Knicks, Rangers fan... Your Sunday started off great with the Giants beating the Packers. It was a morning game. It was over by like 1230. You had the whole rest of the day to relax. And then this news comes out. But you know what? The Yankees are better off without Chapman on the roster. I will say that right now. They are. Because you never know if you're going to get the Aroldis Chapman who can pitch a 1-2-3 inning. Or you're going to get the Aroldis Chapman who can't get anyone out and walks the bases loaded. And then leaves a mess for his bullpen mates to clean up. I prefer him not to be on the roster. Let me know down below if you're watching this on YouTube, if you agree with me. Because as I said, the rotation is only three guys. We'll talk about that in segment two. They don't need Chapman in the bullpen. The rotation in the division series is only three. The rotation in subsequent series can only be or should only be three. So some of the guys that you're used to seeing starting can come out of the bullpen and probably do a better job than a role as Chapman. We're going to talk about the rotation. We're going to talk about guys who are fighting for roster spots, guys who are coming back from injury in just a moment. But first, the numbers don't lie. In the last decade, over 4 million people have chosen Simply Safe home security to protect their homes. And you don't earn the trust of that many people without doing something right. At Simply Safe, your safety is the only thing that matters. They protect you with cutting edge security technology powered by 24 seven professional monitoring agents who always have your back. So if you have a phone, you can use the app. And if you're at game one against the guardians and you want to know if your house is safe, you can look and see a crystal clear HD live stream of your cameras or the wide variety of high tech sensors to make sure that your house is safe. 
Simply Safe's agents will call you the moment a threat is detected. They'll send police or first responders in an emergency, even if you're not home or can't be reached. So customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes at simplysafe.com slash locked on MLB. Save 20% on your Simply Safe security system when you sign up for an interactive monitoring plan and get your first month free. Visit simplysafe.com slash locked on MLB to learn more. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Thank you for making Locked On Yankees your first listen every day. Subscribe now to Locked On Yankees on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts so you get notified when each episode premieres. So the Yankees ALDS roster is not set in stone yet. As I record this, it's nearly 1 p.m. on Monday afternoon. And as I said, the rotation is set. Garrett Cole gets game one. Nestor Cortez gets game two. Luis Severino gets game three. Not surprising, but I don't know. I I think I'd prefer... (laughs) I don't know about you. I would prefer Cortez to get game one because he's really been the ace of the Yankees staff this season. And no offense to Garrett Cole. I know you're being paid millions upon millions of dollars, but yeah. Boone said about the rotation, this is one of the areas of our club that I'm really excited about heading into the postseason. We can go match up with other teams pitchers. I feel like this is the best way to line it up as we embark on our goal of winning a championship. So Cole finished 2022 regular season, 13 and eight with a 3.50 ERA. He led the majors with 33 starts and 257 strikeouts, but he also led the AL with 33 home runs allowed. Cortez was 12 and four with a 2.44 ERA in 28 starts. He struck out 163 in 158 and one third innings. And Severino was dominant in his final outing of the regular season. It was against the Rangers, but it was still good. Seven innings of no hit ball. And he finished seven and three with a 3.18 ERA in 19 starts. Now, the good thing is, heading into this series, Cole has pitched well against Cleveland. He pitched against them twice, went 2-0 and with a 1.42 ERA. Cortez was 1-0 and with a 2.19 ERA in two starts against the Guardians. Now, Boone said, I considered every angle, but ultimately considered this was the way we wanted to go. It's not a, it's, it's not a bad rotation at all. It really isn't. I mean, this is what you want. You want your ace. And if you're not watching me on YouTube, I used air quotes. And then you want Cortez and Severino and not Tyone. I know Tyone had a pretty good year, but I, I feel like Severino is our better choice for game three in the playoffs. I feel like he steps it up during the playoffs. Now, as for the rest of the roster, Matt Carpenter hasn't played since August 8th, but he feels like he's ready. He said, just the way I feel physically, I've been able to get some at-bats here recently and have competitive at-bats. By the way, they did live batting practice. He hit a home run off Cortez, which isn't good. (laughs) It's good for Carpenter, not good for Cortez. And he also had a solid single off Severino. But hey, I'm, I'm less worried about the pitchers. I'm excited about Carpenter. Now, the thing about Carpenter is don't expect to see him in the outfield because of the foot injury that he's coming back from he said it doesn't bother him when he uh, swings the bat but he's only run the bases about five times now what you might see is Giancarlo Stanton playing the outfield and maybe Carpenter DHing but the Yankees have a lot of outfield options right now Stanton said about Carpenter he's been working his butt off to get back so it's been cool to see he's going to help us tremendously Andrew Benintendi according to Aaron Boone seems like a long shot for this round but he's getting close as he recovers from his wrist surgery Stanton hasn't played a defensive inning since the Yankees played against Houston in late July and that was right before he went on the IL with the Achilles tendonitis and they've been hesitant to put him in the outfield because of that. But between Stanton and Carpenter, I think you'd rather Stanton be in the outfield and save Carpenter by using him as DH. But again, they have so many options that it's going to be interesting to see who they put there because 
Judge, Bader, Cabrera. You have Hicks. It could be a lot of things. So Stanton said, whatever's going to help the team the most, with Carpenter coming back, you can't envision going straight from a broken foot to the outfield. And if playing in the outfield is something that's going to work out and make us the best complete team, we'll definitely definitely take a look at it. He's talking about himself. And Boone said, it's something he and I have talked about. As long as he's feeling good, making sure he's getting his work out there. I don't anticipate it early in this series, but I want it in there so it's a potential option. G and I are on board with that. Yeah, you want the best for your team. And if Matt Carpenter is healthy and swinging the way he was before he got hurt, yes, we want him in the lineup on the Rasta. I said it that way because of TikTok. Good Lord. So let me know down below what you think about Aroldis Chapman, what you think about the rotation as it's set, and who you think should play the outfield. Because, you know, Aroldis Chapman didn't show up to that workout because he wasn't sure if he was going to make the roster. Aaron Hicks doesn't know if he's going to make the roster, but guess where Aaron Hicks was this weekend? Yankee Stadium. Ugh. Unbelievable, Aroldis Chapman. So in a moment, we're going to talk about the wild weekend of series because, whoa, was the wild card series wild? We'll talk about that in a moment. Okay. Let me know down below what you think of the wild card series. Do you prefer it to be a wild card winner takes all one game? Or do you like these three game series? I don't know. I kind of like the three game series. There was some interesting baseball played this weekend. And everything was a surprise. The Phillies beating the Cardinals, that was a surprise. The Mariners doing what they did to the Blue Jays on Saturday, that was a surprise. I'm not surprised the Mariners won the series. I'm surprised how they won the series, and we'll talk about that in a moment. The Padres beating the Mets. What? And then... Not surprising that the Guardians and the Rays couldn't hit in the series because they have good pitching on both sides. But that game on Saturday was insane. So because the Guardians beat the Rays the way they did, the Yankees and the Guardians are playing the only series that isn't made up of division rivals. You have the Mariners and the Astros. You have the Dodgers and the Padres. And you have the Phillies and the Braves. And I said this last week when I asked... Who would you prefer the Yankees face, the Guardians or the Rays? Because do you want the familiarity, I cannot say that word, with the Rays? I was leaning towards that. I was. I felt more comfortable with the Yankees playing the Rays because they play them so many times a year and they know basically everything you need to know about that team. The Guardians scare me. They have great pitching. We saw it this weekend. They held the Rays to one run in 24 innings. And we know how the Yankees' offense can be. They can be shut down by good pitching. This scares me. It scares me a lot. By the way, full preview with Locked On Guardians. We're recording it tonight. It'll be up tomorrow. And we'll talk more in depth about the matchup between the Yankees and the Guardians. But let's go through these series. So the Guardians and Rays don't score any runs, and the series is won on a walk-off home run in the bottom of the 15th inning. By the way, if you look at my Twitter account, I joked in the 10th inning and said, this game is going 15, isn't it? Should I play Mega Millions? Probably. The other shocking, well, there were two shocking things, like extremely, no, three. Scherz are giving up four home runs on Friday night. That was shocking. The Phillies coming back the way they did against the Cardinals in that first game, that killed the Cardinals, really. There, I don't know. There was no way the Cardinals were coming back from that. How do you come back from that? You're winning 2 nothing going into the top of the ninth, and you give up six runs. Six. The Cardinals were able to score a run in the bottom of the ninth, but there was no way they were coming back in that game. And then on Saturday, they're just shut down. Completely defeated. Yachty and Pujols. Their careers are done. And why did the Cardinals not win the series, or at least not make it competitive? Arnado and Goldschmidt were shut down. They're two of their best offensive players, MVPs. 
MVP in the running for MVP. Amazing. Then you have the Padres hitting four home runs against Max Scherzer. Trent Grisham suddenly becoming a hitter. What? <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> Last night, the Padres hold the Mets to one hit. One. The entire game, one hit. That's insane. And then I haven't even gotten into the Jays and Mariners yet. That game on Saturday was crazy. But I did... I had a... Oh, God. I had a feeling the Mariners were going to come back. I felt like the Ray, the Rays, the Jays went up too early. And the Blue Jays' bullpen is really hit or miss. And I saw a stat heading into the last week of the season that the the... Blue Jays bullpen, I can't remember the range of games, but they had a really bad stretch there where their ERA was 8.31. And that was my thought because the Mariners are scrappy and they can hit the ball. And they came back. Now, the reason why they came back really was Bo Bichette during that play where he nearly killed George Springer. What was Bichette doing? Springer could have caught that ball, or if he hadn't caught the ball, at least stopped it from going into the outfield. I don't really know what Bo Bichette was doing there. That was a really bad play on his part. Reckless and bad. And he's lucky he didn't have a broken elbow after Springer hit his arm the way he did. Springer had two impacts there, by the way. He hit into Bichette's arm, and then when he hit the turf, his head kind of whipped back and forth, so no wonder why he was on the ground for as long as he was. And he was already hurt, Springer, from bouncing into the wall so many times. He made a catch against the wall earlier in that game on Saturday, and he was sh shaken up. Yeah, Bichette needs to not be so reckless, because he really seriously could have hurt himself and hurt Springer. That was Springer's ball. That was Springer's ball. So the only series to go three was Mets Padres. And I think the sh the most shocking series was probably Phillies Cardinals just because as I said the Cardinals after they gave up those 6 runs in the ninth inning on Friday, they were done. They were done. That is so deflating. That is so deflating. And then on Friday, the Mariners jump out to a 3-nothing lead in the first inning against Alec Manoa. And they go on to win the game 4 nothing. That's also not very inflating. <laughs> it's not a good it's not a good showing when your ace comes out and has that happen. It's his first playoff game. He's young. He's amped up. I get it. But Alec Manoa has a tendency to talk smack. So to see him come out and have that happen was interesting to say the least because there was a you know they have pre-series press conferences and they talk to the players I don't think that he he wasn't being malicious when he did this but Alec Manoa said something to the effect of seeing the Astros in the next round and it was people took it to mean that he was overlooking the Mariners and just expecting the Blue Jays to make it to the next round against the Astros. Look, you want your players to have confidence, but you also don't want them to come out and say something like that because it becomes bulletin board material. The Mariners could hear him say that and think, oh yeah, okay, well look at what we can do. And that's kind of what happened in that series. Then you have the Padres and the Mets. Scherzer gives up four home runs on Friday, which he had never done. In a playoff game. Actually, he had, he had never given up three. They put that stat out, and then he immediately gave up the fourth. Saturday, the Mets come back to tie the series at one apiece. And you're thinking, cool. So it's the only game left. And that was a lot of baseball this weekend. Friday was so much fun. I didn't like how some of the games overlapped, though, because it's hard to switch back and forth. Um, I don't have two TVs in my room, in my den, so I couldn't do that. Although I had one thing on... Um, my computer and the other thing on the TV. So that kind of helped. 
But there was so much baseball on Saturday, Friday and Saturday, that it was slightly a bummer that the Mets and the Padres were the only ones that made it to three games. And then the Mets just didn't show up last night. They didn't show up, and Joe Musgrove just shoved. And the whole ear thing. If Well, I'm sure most of you watched the game, right? Unless you were watching football. But if you didn't see the game, Musgrove's right ear was very shiny. Very shiny. It was very odd. And... It started going around on Twitter. People were like, what the hell is wrong with Musgrove's ear? Then they were joking about how he was openly putting stuff on his ears and it was helping his spin rate because ESPN kept talking about his spin rate being up, his velocity being up. So it almost feels like Steve Cohen was looking at Twitter and then got the word down to the dugout and said, "Uh, you need to check this out. So Buck Showalter had the umpires check out Musgrove's ear. And Alfonso Marquez, I believe he's the crew chief, right, was rubbing Joe Musgrove's ear to make sure that it wasn't sticky stuff. I really hope he used hand sanitizer after that and that he washed his hands. And I joked on Twitter that I do that to my cats when I play with their ears. (laughs) And then they found nothing wrong with it. And then Musgrove continued to shove The Mets finish with one hit, no runs, Padres score six, and they win the series. An 89-win team wins the series against a 101-win team. So this sets up Padres-Dodgers. Padres-Dodgers is interesting because the Dodgers beat them up all year, really. They went 15-4 and against them. They finished 22 games ahead of them in the division. But it feels like that series could go either way. Because the regular season really doesn't matter. It doesn't. Once the playoffs start, it does not matter. Your rotations are different, as you saw with the Yankees, because Tyone would have normally been three, but now Severino is number three. And it's just a different thing it's a different feeling in the playoffs and you see teams that you don't expect to do things do things like look at the nationals in 2019 who the hell expected that to happen no one not even nationals fans expected that to happen so don't assume that the padres are going to get swept by the dodgers in the division series you never know what's going to happen you really don't that's what the great it's that's why baseball is the greatest you never know what's going to happen No one expected these series to go the way they did. Most of the baseball pundits who were making predictions about the wildcard series got none of them right. They picked the Mets. They picked the cards. They picked the Rays. (laughs) I think the Jays and the Mariners were kind of a toss-up, but I saw a lot of people picking the Blue Jays. Because you can't predict baseball. And I say this to Yankee fans, don't overlook the Guardians just because they have trouble hitting. They have really good pitching. And that scares me because as we've seen throughout the season, really good pitching tends to shut down the Yankees. But then they also have games where they do well against really good pitching. So we'll see how it goes. I will say this. It's Garrett Cole against Cal Quantrill in game one. And I guess it's because of the way the wildcard series worked out with Bieber in the first game and Tristan McKenzie in the second game that they're starting Quantrill. But just so you know, Cal Quantrill is unbelievable in progressive field. He hasn't lost there (laughs) as a starter. So I'm kind of surprised that he's starting in Yankee Stadium, but we'll see how that goes. So I will be joining the Locked On Guardians guys tonight for a complete preview we will talk about everything leading into the series and game one is tomorrow night that's right yankees get prime time because of course they do and we'll have everything you need to know on the next locked on yankees but for now that's it for this episode of locked on yankees which is part of the locked on podcast network your team every day remember you can listen to the show in apple Podcasts, google podcasts odyssey spotify stitcher or wherever else you get your podcasts. You can watch and subscribe to us on YouTube. Again, hit the thumbs up button, comment, and click on the bell so you know when our videos go live. 
And now that you've made us your first listen of the day, how about making your second listen the Locked On MLB podcast? MLB expert Paul Francis Sullivan brings humor, passion, and a unique perspective on every team and the biggest stories from around the league. Follow the number one daily league-wide podcast Locked On MLB on the Odyssey app, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. One more thing, if you could be so kind, please rate this podcast and spread the word about this podcast to your fellow Yankee fans. We'd really appreciate it. So enjoy your Monday, and I will talk to you all tomorrow.